Hey Guardians, welcome back. What I'm going to be writing about today is likely going to end up being one of the more controversial videos on this channel, as we're not just going to be looking at one small design aspect of Destiny, but instead, we're going to take a look at the larger picture surrounding the franchise and the game since Beyond Light shipped. If you've been on any social media whatsoever in the last few weeks, I'm sure you've seen people just at each other's throats, PvE players blaming PvP players, PvP players, envious of PvE players, and just a disdain towards Bungie that's reaching a fever pitch. A lot of notable community leaders have also taken to Twitter and other platforms to air their own grievances. Some of them talking about how, man, it really feels like Bungie just ignores us. Others have just straight up said there's not enough content to be a creator for this game. Other ones have rightfully pointed out that, hey, $40 expansion came and went and we didn't get any PvP content. Others have been just utterly abhorring the gameplay because of stasis and freezing and slowing and all the nonsense that comes with it, and others are just feeling their own investment in the universe die. Half the game got vaulted, and it feels like the universe is just slowly shrinking away. And this time around, it really does feel different. Almost always in the past, it has been either one side of the game or the other being angry. PvP players right now are dealing with some of the biggest bullshit I've ever seen with Stasis. I mean, who likes being frozen for four and a half seconds? And, you know, it might be nice to get more than one new map added in the last two years. And on the flip side, PvE players just lost a ton of content from the game. We lost four destinations, five raids gone, beloved play spaces like the Menagerie, tribute halls gone. I mean, this is a united frustration, and it really does beg the question, did Bungie make the right call by continuing Destiny 2 and stringing this game along for the next few years? But they've been better served by instead making a true sequel. That is the heart of the topic today, and we're going to talk about the pros and cons of both these two timelines. So let's talk about why Bungie made the right call to continue developing for Destiny 2 as opposed to making a true sequel. I think the number one thing you've got to talk about is what Bungie's trying to do as a company and eventual publisher of their own. It's really clear that they want to be a multi-game publisher like some of the giants like Blizzard and Bioware of old. And to meet those ends, they've started putting a lot of their absolute best and brightest stars on on Destiny efforts. I mean, look no further than Chris Barrett. That man has such a great track record with Destiny, a vision that aligned with the player base, and he saved the game multiple times with Age of Triumph and Forsaken and other efforts. He's off being the game director for a title that's unannounced that most of people have been assuming is Codename Matter. Bungie just doesn't want to put all their eggs to be in one basket. I mean, that's probably the smartest thing they could do as a business, because you have to remember, Bungie is a business. It's not a charity, unfortunately. Like, think of yourself as an investor. Are you going to throw all your money at Tesla stock? It's an intriguing proposition. I mean, they're an electrifying company. They could just as easily get to the moon, or they could crash and burn into the sea, and you'd lose all your money. Or would you rather diversify your portfolio and get a nice index fund going that's going to get you a 7 to 10% profit every year? It's really clear that Bungie's taking that ladder door because it's a lot safer and has more growth potential for them down the road when some small seeds become big trees. The other reason why Bungie likely stuck with Destiny 2, and it makes a lot of sense, is look at the transition from Destiny 1 to Destiny 2. We lost so many good features that we had during Age of Triumph that still, over three years later, aren't in Destiny 2. Strikes are absolute garbage, still, compared to where they where they were at the end of Destiny 1. Eh. This is a time for a nice uh, plug. Watch our first video we put out the other week about how we changed things and why it got so bad. Anyway, end plug. The, another thing to look at is look at tower vendors. They're still freaking Chuck E. Cheese slot machines instead of proper NPCs. I mean, God forbid, look at factions. They're just dead now. And holy lord, if you look at the loot systems for PvP, Iron Banner, Trials are both still so much weaker from a design standpoint than they were in Destiny 1. Now, another thing you have to take into consideration is Bungie's current staffing plan. There was an article put out that said something like 25% of their studio hasn't ever stepped foot within the studio since 
since the lockdown started. They had about 600 employees before then. That means they're around like 800 employees now. They've staffed up a ton. But that's a lot of new people to get involved, and they're likely on other projects. If Bungie had wanted to make a proper Destiny 3, they probably would have had to have gone dark after Shadowkeep, at the minimum. Maybe they wouldn't have even made Season of Opulence, which would have been a shame. They just aren't able to keep developing seasonal content in addition to preparing for a proper sequel. And we also know that Bungie wants Destiny 2 to, to be, in their words, quote, the best action MMO on the planet. And another reboot would probably just put that goal further out in their minds. Other MMOs don't want sequels. There's no World of Warcraft 2. I mean, continuing to build off of a year's old foundation's got a lot of merits. And a game being flush with a lot of content for new players and returning players who might step their way is a really, really good way to keep them around. Look at all the Destiny players that found a home with Final Fantasy XIV. There's tons of them. That game has a literal years of backlogged relevant content if you want to jump into the game. No, I haven't played it myself, but I trust a lot of the people that have given me these recommendations. And the final stone-cold, just utterly corporate reason why Destiny 2 has continued on in its current state is it doesn't matter how much the community complains for the last year plus with when it's really been getting really, really loud. Bungie has been making a ton of cash to the point that within three days of the dawning last month, they had made millions on a couple of ornaments and emotes. There's just a couple of cosmetic items that Bungie can easily just shit out. And there's also evidence that Bungie made over $300 million dollars off of Destiny in 2019, primarily off of Shadowkeep. I mean, for goodness sakes, Activision and Bungie, back early this past decade, signed a deal where Activision was going to fund $500 million for the costs of Destiny over a 10-year lifespan. Bungie made $300 million off of Shadowkeep, a DLC that didn't introduce a single new destination. It's getting to the point where you can almost think of Destiny as just another Call of Duty or Assassin's Creed, aka an annual franchise that's been quote-unquote solved. And these developers know this. And in this case, with Bungie making more Destiny as it will, is just going to keep making them a ton of money at very little risk and very little cost relative to innovation and trying something new. Program managers do this all the time across all engineering industries. Game dev is no exception. And before we start pointing the finger at Mr. Luke Smith, he is a polarizing figure among all of us Destiny fans. And while I personally like him, I really do think that Chris Barrett had a better vision for Destiny than Luke's had. Luke, Luke Smith was great with Taken King, but then we also got stinkers like D2 Vanilla and Shadowkeep, which didn't give us that much. And then you look at Chris Barrett, in House of Wolves, he made the original Trials of Osiris that launched not just my streaming career, but tons of others as well. People that don't even play Destiny anymore. You heard of someone like Dr. Lupo? Yeah, he started with House of Wolves, Trials of Osiris 2. You also have to look at Rise of Iron and Age of Triumph. Just absolutely made Destiny 1 a great game and built so much goodwill with the franchise that the, the popularity for D2 before its launch was off the charts. Barrett also made Forsaken, and that was just mind-boggling. An entire in-game destination with the Dreaming City, The Last Wish, our first dungeon, like true innovations. But guess what? I guarantee you that all of those awesome things for the players barely showed up as a blip in terms of additional revenue. Luke Smith has mastered minimum viable product, which means that it's a good enough destiny that players like myself and others enjoy playing the game, but it Bungie doesn't have to innovate, they don't have to take risks, and it prints money. And especially at this stage in the game's lifespan, that's so valuable. And I guarantee you Bungie is sticking to this philosophy that Luke Smith is going to continue to give us a set amount of revenue per year. That is the war chest to fund the development of new games that can be that can afford to be risky and innovate. Chris Barrett is working on Matter. That game could take a lot of risks, be something brand new, and if for some godforsaken reason it flops, Bungie has other games in development, and they still have Destiny to say, haha, money printer go brr. So, uh, I think I've probably strung you along enough. Let's talk about the whole point of this video. Why should Bungie have made Destiny 3 instead of continuing to develop for Destiny 2? So, I think the number one reason, and we're gonna jump to it right now, is that they could have used Destiny 3 as a true, clean slate for Bungie. And, in the eyes of the game community, if they've made D3, they could seriously 
arc it almost entirely on the premise of it being a game, quote unquote, without Activision. I mean, look no further than what D2 Year One with Activision did to Destiny. It basically went, Activision went to Bungie, hey, screw the D1 dedicated player base. They're gonna keep playing no matter what we do. Dumb this game down, get that sweet, sweet casual money and new players in here so we can report a bigger profit margin at the end of 2017. Bungie's creative vision with Activision was seriously kept in check. And Forsaken was a rare deviation from that, which Activision, straight up said later, was a failure and wasn't worth it. I mean, look how good that was for the players, but Activision was like, nope, not good enough for us. I mean, for goodness sakes, we had Bungie out there publicly popping champagne in the studios when they cut ties with Activision, which I very much agree with them. Bungie being on their own means that Destiny can evolve and be something beyond what even any of us can really imagine and think of. Activision would have just made it continue to be Call of Duty the yearly game, which unfortunately is what Destiny 2 in its current state has become anyway. The other thing that Bungie could have done is they really could have thrown away almost all the negative PR baggage with Destiny 2's launch. Ask yourself, how many people did you play Destiny 1 with? How many of them played Destiny 2 at launch, said that this is just utter garbage, and left? I bet you tried to convince them to come back, and they're like, bruh, D2 is just awful, I'm not playing it. If you go to almost any online forum, you get the, what, people still play Destiny, lol? Destiny 3 would have been a chance to truly silence that narrative that's just been floating around the gaming industry. Not even since Destiny 2, since Destiny 1. Bungie absolutely could have painted Activision as the ones controlling them, and how they finally have broken free and can do what they want to do. And we also have to say this, Bungie are the utter masters of hype. They could release a Destiny 3 that is skimped down from what Destiny 2 currently is, doesn't have as much content, but Bungie knows how to market. Think, think to yourself, how many times have you watched a Destiny trailer and immediately just pulled out the shut up and take my money? meme. It's impeccable how good their marketing group is when it comes to making trailers and advertising just about anything. And this really, really would have gotten a ton of the gaming industry revitalized towards Destiny. Look at, take a look at Google Trends. If you look at Destiny, there's a spike, obviously, in 2014, in September of that year, when Destiny 1 came out. Obviously, the game, like, wasn't that good at launch, other than Vault of Glass, thankfully. The game continued to make itself better, and there was a small spike with Taken King, and another small spike with Rise of Iron. But then, we almost got back to D1 launch peak levels with Destiny 2 launch. Like, it was nuts. A game that had been written off as dead, but as soon as a new game comes out, most people are willing to try it. It's a $60 barrier entry, or if Bungie wanted to make a Destiny 3 free-to-play, a free-to-play entry point, and they could have rolled that in with, we're an independent studio now, we're going to be an example of other studios that you don't need a big evil publisher like Activision, and I guarantee you that Google trend chart, instead of being the tiny little almost insignificant blip we see way over on the right side with Beyond Light, could have been monumentous with a Destiny 3 in terms of getting new people talking about Bungie, which publicity is almost always good, and trying their game. Another big reason why Destiny 3, I honestly think, should have been the move this year is it would have been a true technical fresh start. Not this hack job that we've seen with content vaulting so far. We know for a fact that Bungie spent a lot of 2020 just removing things, cutting the game down, throwing things into the Destiny content vault, making sure stuff didn't break, and, I mean, take a look at how much stuff has been breaking. We've seen so many bugs. Almost every Crucible map has out-of-bounds exploits that are just plaguing the game, and PC performance has just been going down the toilet. Some people were getting under 30 FPS when Beyond Light launched. It was absolutely ridiculous. A Destiny 3 could have been a much, much cleaner break for Bungie and from a technical performance side of the game. Instead, they basically did that for Beyond Light, but they had to make sure that they didn't break a live game while doing it. I guarantee you that their efforts to clean up the game were impeded by the fact that they were doing, doing it to a live game. You also have to think about how sunsetting has gone down, and sunsetting has been 
one of, if not the most controversial thing I've seen in almost seven years of playing Destiny. So many people hate it. Even players like myself who supported it are starting to grow apathetic towards it because of how it's been handled. But sunsetting loot, taking away destinations, losing raids on an utterly massive scale? We, we've seen this before. And it was welcomed with open arms by the community at large, Destiny 2 launch, that transition. If enough players feel like it's a new start with refreshed systems, new planets, potential new subclasses and trees and systems, it's a lot easier to say goodbye to that recluse or mountaintop. And with a new game, you don't have to take away any of that. If you want to play Destiny 2 again, you go boot up Destiny 2. If I want to go play with my Kakaitis SR4, maybe my favorite gun from Destiny 1, I can go load up Destiny 1 right in my PS4 right now and go play it. It's still there waiting for me. Destiny 2, if I want to go kick Valkyrie's ass and do Spire Stars again, he's gone. I can't do that anymore. It doesn't exist. It sucks. And what we ended up with is while Bungie was stripping down Destiny 2 with Beyond Light, it essentially made the game Destiny 2.5. Like, it's not Destiny 2 anymore, but it's not Destiny 3. It's just some weird middle ground in between that just has a lot of people feeling apathetic and confused about the franchise right now. I mean, I look at Destiny Item Manager, when I see all of those sunset icons just staring back at me of like, haha, you could use this loot once, but haha, it's gone now. It just, it sucks, man. It sucks. And Datto made an entire video about this recently, and oh man, I was waiting for someone to say this, and I could not agree more, is that in 2021 and beyond, we don't need more Destiny, more Destiny 2. We need new Destiny. We need new weapon perk systems, rarity, um, armor systems. We need content that can scale up to our godlike power, charge with light, war mine cells, perfected builds, orbs everywhere, supers flying, light and dark combined. There's nothing in Destiny 2 that anywhere comes close to challenging this godlike power that we have. It would be amazing to have things like infinite rifts and content that scales up to us, horde modes that don't end until you literally get put six feet under by super powerful enemies. We could get true open world innovation. When I was told about this game, I had never, back in summer 2014, I had never played Halo. Well, I played Halo on like the couch at my friend's house, but I'd never owned Halo. I never played any of the campaigns. I wasn't really familiar, I was a Call of Duty guy. And I was also a big like Skyrim and Elder Scrolls fan. One of my friends who was a big Halo nerd, he basically told me, hey, Bungie's teamed up with Activision and they're making like this space Skyrim game. I'm like, what in the world? Take my money, I gotta try this thing. I had been out of gaming for almost three years when Destiny pulled me back in. Perhaps a Destiny 3 could actually get us closer to that. Europa is a good step in the right direction, but further. Perhaps we could actually see bigger raids, 8 to 16 man encounters, could get the game actually feeling closer to the grand scale of, say, mythic raiding in World of Warcraft. There's been a lot of sharing going on lately of getting a bugged Nightfall, where there was like 16 people killing the uh, Glassway Strike final boss, and it looked ridiculous, but also awesome. Why can't we have stuff like that supported in, in game that can do it? We could also have new social systems just built from the ground up. A lot of Destiny 2 was built on, we don't want to make anyone unhappy. Social features were straight up gimped with almost everything being opt-in rather than out because of perceived toxicity and just, it, it, it really hurts the game. We could actually make the game feel massively multiplayer online rather than shared world shooter. And the final thing I'll say about a Destiny 3 is I can almost certainly guarantee you that it would be led by Chris Barrett, considering that he is leading Matter, aka Bungie's biggest foray into the future with a brand new game, if he had been in charge of Destiny 3, it could have radically shaken up this game in more ways than I could ever hope to speculate. There's a reason he's a grizzled ancient with more than 20 years of experience at Bungie going all the way back to Myth before Halo Combat Evolved was even out. is one of the best game devs on the planet, and I have total faith that we would have seen an amazing Destiny experience if he'd been leading the charge to develop a new game the last few years. And that is that. Thank you guys so much for coming out and watching. This video is probably going to stir up a lot of conversations. Try and keep it civil down in the comments, guys. Thank you so much for the support on the first video we put out. And I'm looking forward to hearing what you guys have to tell me about what Destiny 2 should be doing and if you think Destiny 3 should have happened instead. Tell me down in the comments 
Make sure you like, subscribe, all that good stuff. And I will catch you guys all in the next one. This has been your host, QJ. Cheers.